Welcome to Watercolor Lessons with Kathy. I'm Kathy Nichols, and I'm a lifelong artist, painter, and teacher. I help students of all ages tap into their creativity with watercolor. Watercolor is a great way to express yourself, and it's easy to get started and fun to do. My watercolor lessons are designed for beginners of all ages. No theory and not too technical. Just follow along with me. I hope you join me to learn how to paint with watercolor. I can't wait to see your paintings. Nothing says summer like a day at the beach. So let's have some fun and paint one. Welcome to today's lesson. Today we're going to paint a nice day at the beach. And when I paint, I sometimes use a model, and that can be from a previous painting, a sketch, or a photograph. Today it's a photograph, and here's the photograph. So let's get started. Take your spray bottle, spray your pans of paint here, put some water in your palette. Pick up your liner brush, and what I like to do is to, with watercolor, you can lightly sketch in things. So let's use our liner brush and load our brush with yellow ochre. Okay, so our palm tree is going to be off to the corner here, and it's leaning a little bit to the side, and then the branches go off to the side here like that. You need to load your brush as needed. A few ones up here. And then bring the tree back down here. And then just soften the lines with just wetting your brush with water. Like so. Okay, so go ahead and clean your brush and the ocean is out here. So let's draw where the ocean stops and the sky starts. And to, you want to load your, your brush with the intense blue here. And the ocean is going to stop about right here. I'm going to water mine down a little bit. Add some water to it. And then bring it across. And there's a little bit of that showing on the other side of the tree there. And there's a little bit of the sand showing. So don't bring the blue all the way down to the bottom of the tree there. 
Okay. Then let's load your brush still with the intense blue and the water. Let's draw the water line. It's not going to go straight across. It kind of leans a little bit like so. And I'm just making indication where the water is. And we'll build upon that. And the sand's going to be below. And there's sky above. So let's start with some of the sand below here. Still using our liner brush. Now the sand is going to be more of a gold color, not a dark brown. So with watercolor, you can build layers. So let's start with a light layer of the yellow ochre. And go right below that line that you created, the water line here. Okay, now let's stop and work on the sky. Now, when doing the sky, you want to make sure that you have your paper towel. We're just going to make some little slight clouds off to the side here and a little bit below here. Now, to do that, you want to do it when the paper and paint are wet and we're going to lift some of the paint out to make those clouds and some of those clouds i'm just going to show you before we start so you get the idea is some of them are a little bit straight so you want to take your paper towel and make it a little bit like a tube to make some straight ones. And then we're gonna kind of crunch it up and make some little puffy ones above the line, straight line. So first we'll need to use our mop brush. And to create that color, Use your ultramarine blue, but first, I don't want it as dark as that blue. I'm going to take some of my white, wet, wet your mop brush with white, and put some white on your palette here. I'm just putting some off to the side here. And then once that's done, go ahead and dip your mop brush in the ultramarine blue, just a tad. And it'll kind of create more of a baby blue. And let's start putting that across the sky ran out of the paint. We'll have to mix some more.
So now I'm going to lift some out here, some straight lines, and then put some little puff above those straight lines. Like that. Now that's a little bit light. And I want to add a little more color to that. So once you're done with that, let's take our round with pointed tip brush and add straight ultramarine blue. And I'm doing some right below that line. And then I'm going to add some a little bit above. This is a little bit gray to me, so I'm going to add the intense blue to kind of give it more of a pop color. And that turned out too dark but you can water it down a little bit. I think I need to do that. And then spread it a little bit down here. A little bit more here. Okay, let's give it a good dry before we do anything else. And when it dries, it's going to dry a little lighter. Okay, now when you dry it, you might notice that it kind of moves your paint around. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes I like where it goes. Now, right here, it's a little dark. Let me dab that. Well, it's still kind of... And to fix this spot I don't like, I'm just going to wet it. I don't like the definite line that's fading away. So I'm going to just smear it right around. Pull that paint out. Here it got a little dark. Just pull it out like that. Okay. So let's turn to the water. Now, with the water, it's going to be darker here and lighter as you come towards the sand. 
So sticking with the round with pointed tip brush, load your brush with intense blue. And this is just straight intense blue. And go all the way across. Then I'm dipping my brush with just water and diluting that. And just going above below that line where the water is really strong and diluting it. And using the paint that is already on the paper. And sometimes you think, well, I want to do the exact same I did last time. And sometimes with watercolor, it's really hard to do that. I always think about how the paper is made from trees, which is a living thing and kind of has a life of its own. I've heard people say that work with watercolor, and I think that's, I find that true. Now, I did loan my brush a little bit with the darkness there because I want to add some here. And just kind of make lines. I'm leaving some white spots because I, it will kind of make the water pop out like there's tiny waves off in the distance. Kind of like that. I'm going to kind of let that sit and gel in my mind. And what is helpful that I find is you, you know, you can work on a section of the painting and then stop and go to another section. And that will give the, give the other area time to dry. And then you can go back and reevaluate what you need to do. So... Here the water is carried to the other side and it's dark, so I want to fix that. Carry that a little bit back to the other side here. Now, <clears throat> let's work on the tree. Now, since I'm going to do that, I want to dry this. Because if I start to paint, <clears throat> excuse me, Okay, let's work on the tree here. And take your round with pointed tip brush and load it with some burnt umber. And I'm starting up the side here. And then bringing it here to the side. And then carry the line all the way to the other side of the tree.
And let's add some yellow ochre into that. To carry that color <clears throat> up here, let's give it a little dry. Let's switch back to our burnt umber. And add some more of the brown color in the tree. Now, down below here, where the sand is, there's some shadows. So we will, let's use some of our burnt umber down at the bottom of the tree. And let's add a touch of the yellow ochre. I have some right here in my palette. I'm gonna just grab that. And shadows are really fun. So there's a little shadow at the base of the tree. And then it goes a little further like that. And then it extends out. Now, the branch comes all the way to here. So there's some light little shadows here. Now, it's not going to be as dark as where it is at the base of the tree. So we have our mixture in our palette here. Let's just use that but add more yellow ochre to it to lighten it up. Add a little water. And then put it on. Now, if it's still too dark, you can add water to your brush. I'm going to wipe my brush off a little bit and spread the paint that you already put on your paper. And let's put some spots here. like that. You don't need much. Okay. Let's leave that for now to, you know, sometimes you need to let things soak in. And the nice thing about watercolor is you can change it by um, adding water. Reactivate it. So here are the branches going out. So let's start with those. Now those have some green on them. So let's add some sap green to our mixture here. This is a little bright green. I'm just adding some of that yellow ochre to make it a little bit lighter green. And then start drawing the little branches that come out.
There's some up here. And off to the side here. Okay, let's give it another good dry. Okay, now let's clean our rounded pointed tip brush and the water here, we need to add some more blue. Um, there's a little white wave before it hits the sand, but there's a little more blue color in the ocean right here. So let's load our brush with intense blue. And fill in here. And just go not quite to the sand. Go above the sand here. That looks better. Okay. Now, we need to make a little more of the sand pop out. Pop out. So, let's go clean your brush. And let's add, using yellow ochre, touch of burnt umber, some darker spots. Again, I like to start a little darker and then just add some water and spread some of that paint. Kind of make a more subtle line with the water. And this white will act like there's a small, gentle wave coming into the beach. I need to add a little bit up in this area here.
Okay. Now, on the tree, I, I, there's not enough contrast. I think the tree needs to pop out more. So let's add some darker areas within the leaves here and the trunk of the tree. So let's start with the leaves. And let's take our liner brush and load it with straight sap, sap green. And we're going to put some of green leaves in there like the sun is hitting it and it's kind of catching that color in the leaves there. That will make it kind of pop out a little bit like that. Now let's go to the trunk here. Using our burnt umber. And let's mix a little bit of the ultramarine blue making it a little darker. And I see that this actually turns it more of a green. So I'm going to put a little, if you look at the leaves, there's, I see two shades of green and this will be the third color of green. Just a few, you don't need much spots. You don't want too much. Just a little bit. Just kind of like that. Okay. Now I'm, sometimes you do need to clean an area in your palette and going to clean this area right here and then clean your brush and we'll take burned umber with some of the intense blue and put some dark spots there Some are almost like a round hole. And put some of that darkness down on the bottom of the tree. And if some spots are too much, you can give it a little dab. And that will actually kind of create some little bit texture in the tree. Just slightly, just a little bit. I want to carry some of that darkness of the shadow over here, just on a few spots.
All right. Now there's some like scraggly kind of things up on the tree. And I'm just going to put those hanging down a little bit. Almost like dead branches that just kind of come out. Now I'm, it's good to take time and step back and put your brush down to look at it. And one of the things with watercolor is to overdo it. And it's easy to overdo it. And that's why it's to take your time, relax, enjoy the process. And so now that I have stopped and looked at my painting and put my brush down, I like the over overall look. You know, sometimes when I am painting, I get caught. I said, oh, I missed this branch. I should paint it in. Well, I need to look at my composition to see, do I really need to do that? Maybe that worked in what you're looking at, but you need to really take time and look at what's in front of you, what, what, you, are what you are painting, and that will help you stay in the now. And if I step back and look at my painting, I like it, and I'm ready to stop. So I'll see you in the next lesson, and have a great day. Join me next time when we'll have some more creative fun. To give watercolor a try, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and take a lesson or two. Take care, be safe, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.